Hello Internet, Oscar Vidis again, this time with a video on Stephenson's method for finding roots and Aitken's accelerator. Let's start with Aitken's delta squared method. It was first published in 1927 and is known as a convergence accelerator. The main idea is that given a sequence of numbers with linear convergence, you can use three consecutive numbers to predict the next one. Let's look at an example using fixed point iteration to create our sequence of numbers. If you're not familiar with fixed point iteration, I suggest watching my video on this topic. Fixed point iteration gives us this sequence of numbers. And if we subtract the root from each x, we can compute the error. Eventually, our sequence of errors will approach zero. Now let's evaluate the error ratio at each step. Eventually, these error ratios become approximately the same number. This is the basis of Aiken's delta squared method. Given a linear convergence sequence, in their case we're approaching a root, when n is large, our error ratios will be about the same. For simplicity, we'll call these consecutive numbers a, b, and c, and our formula will look like this. And given this, we can actually solve for r. Here's how we'll do that. Starting with this formula, we can remove the denominators, then expand them. Since they have r squared in both of them, we can subtract those out. Then we factor out an r from the right side and move everything with an r term to the left and everything else to the right. Afterwards, we factor out r again and rearrange it so that it looks like this. Now we just simply divide by that term and we have an approximation for r. But we're not quite done yet. We can rearrange this form to make future math easier. First, we complete the square in the numerator and then move the terms around. Afterwards, we'll do a double negation of part of this so that we can turn this into a subtraction of fractions. For the term on the left, we can factor out an a. And for the term on the right, we can simplify that to be b minus a squared. This will give us this form for r. We know that r is approximately equal to this expression. What that expression is actually equal to, we'll call p hat. If we substitute our x's back into this expression, there's something special about the numerator and the denominator. The numerator is the forward difference and the denominator is the second order central difference. This is where we get Aitken's delta squared method from. Let's look at an example using three of the numbers we computed from fixed point iteration. We can compute delta x and delta squared x and plug them into Aitken's delta squared method. When we do this, we get results in the value of 1.625. Now, if we had kept iterating using fixed point iteration, we would eventually have reached the value of 1.625. This is the power of Aitken's delta squared method. It's known as an accelerator. We can predict later values using three of the current ones. Stephenson's method was first published in 1933 in a paper called Remarks on Iteration. Here, he's referring to fixed point iteration. He writes, our principal object being to show how the process of iteration, which is often futile in its primitive form, may be improved by a suitable combination of three consecutive values. Does that sound familiar? We shall therefore use as a working formula the approximation, this function, where x sub v may be any element of the sequence, and that looks a lot like Aitken's delta squared method. Stephenson's method says that given a function and a fixed point iteration version of that function with an error threshold and a starting value, we set a equal to the starting value and then b and c are two consecutive values of fixed point iteration. Then we compute p hat given our Aitken's formula and repeat the process with a equal to p hat until f of p hat is less than some epsilon in absolute value. Let's continue to use our example from earlier. We started with the value of two, did two iterations of fixed point iteration and computed p hat as 1.625, which was the value of x5. Now with Stephenson's method, we'll restart using x5. So then we did two more iterations of fixed point iteration and compute a new p hat. This time it's the value of x13. Then we restart again using x13, doing two more iterations of fixed point iteration and plugging it into Aitken's delta squared method, which gives us the value of x27. And here we'll meet our threshold and stop. There's another version of Stephenson's method that I'll simply refer to as version 2.0 that looks like this. And you'll see this very commonly in the literature. This example is from Kumar et al. These two versions are actually the same thing. They're both derived from 
Aitken's delta squared method. You'll see it either as the version on the left or the version on the right. And we'll actually show that these are the same thing by showing that the numerators for both of these are the same and that the denominators for both of these are the same. First, the numerators. We know that from fixed point iteration, x sub n plus 1 is equal to g of x sub n. So if we do substitution, we're able to get this form for the equation on the left. We also know that our sequence of x's is eventually going to reach the root. So we can say that when n is large, g of x sub n minus x sub n is going to be equal to 0 since we're at the root. And the function at that root is also going to be equal to 0. Therefore, g of x sub n minus x sub n is equal to f of x sub n. If we substitute back, this shows that our numerators are equal to each other. Visually, they look like this, where when you have a very large value of n, you're converging on the root, they have the same root. Now we need to show that the denominators are equal to each other. First, we know this from earlier, and it should be fairly intuitive to show that x sub n plus 2 is equal to g of x sub n plus 1. Let's start with the equation on the right. If we substitute in what we know for f of x, we get this form, which we can simplify a little. Now, if we evaluate the composite function of f of g of x sub n, we get this form, which we can simplify again. Now, if we do our substitution and rearrange, this is our equation on the left. So we've shown that they're equal to each other. Let's do a bit more cleanup. In this form, we aren't doing fixed point iteration, so we don't necessarily need a p hat variable. We can simply say that now we're just computing x sub n plus 1. If we do a bit more math, we can say that the term on the bottom is actually a very good approximation of the derivative, which we can also simplify to this. Now our function actually looks like Newton's method. Now about that order. Newton's method we know has a quadratic convergence, but so does Stephenson's method. And we can show this using our order formula. If we look at our examples of p hats that we computed and take a look at the errors, meaning the p hat minus the root, Let's substitute in our first three errors, and the result is an order of about 1.92. If we substitute in our last three errors, we get an order of about 2.24, showing that this is converging relatively quickly. Some notes in Stephenson's method. We achieve quadratic convergence without a derivative, although we can still diverge to divide by zero. The method also works best when our error ratios are approximately equal to each other, so if you're too far away, it might have a tough time. Depending on the version of Stephenson's method you use, you might get a different numeric sequence, although it's doing the same thing. Note that every iteration of Stephenson's requires two new function calls, either two new g of x calls or two new f of x calls. Compared with secant method, which only needs one new function call, even though it has a lower order, it might actually converge faster, depending on how complicated your function is. The code that I use will be hosted on GitHub. As always, thank you for watching. The links to all the papers I discussed will be in the description box below the video. I had a lot of difficulty accessing Stephenson's and Aitken's original papers, so I needed help from my librarian. If you have any suggestions for future videos or questions or comments on this one, please be sure to leave them in the comments.